between the issues with Silicon Valley Bank collapsing, Etsy and Shopify sellers not getting their money, and Wells Fargo deposits disappearing, these last few days have been crazy in the financial world, and I wanted to hop on and do this impromptu episode of What the Funds to explain what the heck is going on and give you an explanation. And, you know, hopefully this information will help you in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so first off, let's start off with the Wells Fargo situation. Now, with Wells Fargo um, on Friday, there have been issues, well, there were issues um, as far as customers of Wells Fargo having missing deposits in their bank accounts. Some people said that their accounts went to zero, some of them went to negative. And so, if you know anything about overdraft fees, those start to add up. And so, Wells Fargo has come out and said that today, today is Monday the 13th, that People have started to see money coming back into their account, their money come back into their account, and those fees are going to be, of course, um, waived, okay? So those issues look like they are being solved. Now, how long is it going to take for us to finally break up with Wells Fargo? I really have no idea. Um, between Wells Fargo and Bank of America, I have lost count with how many times people's money have been missing, how many lawsuit settlements we have to read, it's getting crazy, okay? But I get a question a lot about what types of banks should we go to if we shouldn't be banking with these big banks, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. I like to bank with credit unions, um, I like to bank with mid-sized and small banks, especially local banks, okay? So this is going to vary depending on where you're located, what region you're in, okay? But these types of banks, they're typically a little bit more mutually beneficial, okay? Because any bank that you put your money in, of course, there's going to be a risk, all right? There's only so much that we can do about that, but if you're going to take that risk, at least you can use it uh, as something that's mutually beneficial with being able to develop relationships with banks, being able to get funding from banks and all that good stuff, okay? So, Wells Fargo, if you have been, um, if you're a customer of Wells Fargo and you've been affected by it, let us know down in the comments if you've gotten your money back or if you're still dealing with issues, okay? Hopefully, everything's being resolved over here with these next few days. Now, let's dive into the elephant in the room. Obviously, you probably know what has gone on with Silicon Valley Bank, but if you've been living under a rock this past weekend, um, sh long story short, Silicon Valley Bank is the 16th largest bank or was the 16th largest bank in the United States. They were the pretty much go-to bank for um, small business, for startups, for venture capital firms, okay? And this bank actually got shut down by, by the FDIC, okay? And that is because they made some announcements this week or this past week saying, hey, our investments aren't doing so great. We got to raise some money. So we are selling our assets at a discount and that freaked out their customers that freaked out venture capital firms and what they did was they went and they took all their money out the bank so in a very short amount of time they lost about 40 billion dollars okay 40 billion dollars meaning people went and took their money out of their accounts so remember this bank was a go-to for businesses for tech companies for startups they have a lot of money in their bank account so they went and took all of that out they don't have the cash for it, okay? Because banks do not keep your cash inside their bank, which I'll make a whole nother video explaining how that works. But they don't keep the money there, okay? They go, they put it in assets, they're still in control of it, but it takes a little bit longer for them to actually be able to liquidate it, sell the assets, and turn that into cash that you can put in your pocket. So that is called a bank run when a customer is pretty much run to the bank, grab their money out. Now the FDIC had to shut down this bank. There's also two other banks that went down um, this past week and that had to get shut down. Okay, so it's been a lot going on and this has affected a lot of businesses. Now you're probably familiar with Etsy or Shopify. Those are just two businesses that were banking with Silicon Valley Bank when this collapse happened. Etsy over the weekend sent out an email to a big portion of their sellers pretty much saying, hey, your payments are going to be delayed because we were affected by this downfall with Silicon Valley Bank. Now, today is Monday and Etsy has announced 
that they are now um, working with an alternative payment processing partner to help them get this money to the sellers, the money that they are owed. So it looks like there are some sellers that are now starting to be able to process their payments. I did see that a lot of sellers on Etsy were starting to put their shops in vacation mode so that um, other sales don't come in while this is down, but it looks like they are trying to fix the issue. So um, let me know, were you one of the sellers that were affected? And also I know that with Shopify, Shopify has some payments delayed as well. It doesn't seem like it was as big as Etsy, but there were some people who use Shopify when uh, their payments were delayed. And I actually know a few business owners that have been having issues with Shopify over these last few weeks, okay? So things have been a little weird in the money in the banking world, but it looks like things are hopefully starting to get ironed out. Now, if you're probably wondering, you know, what happens next, right? Silicon Valley Bank, they got shut down by the FDIC as well as two other banks with um, Silvergate and, uh, What's the other one? My my brain just went blank. Oh, Signature Bank. Okay, Signature Bank as well got shut down by the FDIC. Now, what does this mean? A lot of times when things like this happen, you probably assume that the government's going to come swoop in, save the day, right? That's typically what happens. Now, um, President Biden, they, he did, you know, address this in the video. And basically in the video, he said that, you know, they're not going to be necessarily bailing out these banks, these institutions, right? They're not going to be taking taxpayers' money and giving them to these institutions to fix the problem. So it looks like what they're doing, they want to do their best to make sure that the people that were responsible for this, they are held accountable. Um, the investors who invested in those banks, um, you know, that's just kind of a part of what happens when you invest. That's the risk that you take, right? So they're not going to be really doing much with that. But for the consumers, for the businesses that actually trusted this bank and put their money in there, what they are doing is they are making sure that everyone gets their money in whole, okay? So typically when things like this happen, the FDIC is going to insure up to $250,000. Now, like I said, we're not really talking about a ton of um, regular people like you and me, right, consumers. Majority of their customers were big businesses, were tech startups, um, venture capital backed startup companies. They had millions and millions of dollars in these accounts. And for them to hear, hey, we're only gonna be able to insure up to 250,000, that's a little scary. So the government came in and said, hey, we're going to draw from some of the fees that these banks pay us. And we're gonna draw from that and we're gonna give it to you all to help you know, mitigate the loss that these companies are, are having. And they're doing that as quickly as possible. They said they were starting that today, you know, getting people their money as fast as possible. They are also um, put in place a program in order to um, stop the panic, right? Because when news like this comes out, people tend to panic, right? And I think that was happening a little bit, especially with um, all the fear mongering on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, right? It gets a little bit scary. So what they've done, They've put together this lending program where essentially a bank is able to uh, lend money from the government in order to make sure they have enough cash to cover any type of withdrawals. Now, this is pretty significant because they don't want people running to the bank and being in fear that they cannot withdraw their money. So that's why they have put together this program to allow banks to borrow money borrow cash, okay? Allow them to borrow cash. And basically what they're doing is they're using the assets that these banks invest in, they're using that as collateral for these loans. And so this is going to help the banks keep up with the demand as far as people coming to withdraw their money for whatever reason. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out and what effect this is going to have. I know that mortgage rates did drop Okay, so the real estate, uh, the real estate industry, there are going to be some shifts as far as mortgages. Um, obviously, with the banking system, there's going to be some shifts. So I'm very curious as to what this will look like. Um, I've seen a lot of fear mongering. I've seen a lot of doomsday gurus right, saying that the world is over, um, that this is the worst financial event that can happen to the United States. Um, but I love to stay optimistic and stay informed. And I just always say, don't panic. Right, um, only control what you can control, and I'm going to do my best to 
keep you informed, keep you educated as to what the heck is going on because I know it can be overwhelming and super confusing. So questions that you have, you can drop them down below in the comment section and I'll make sure I do videos to answer them. But um, that is all the updates that we have today for Monday the 13th. I hope that this was helpful. I'm gonna catch you on the next segment of What the Funds.